you're watching a Throttle House track test. Look at that. Welcome to the Throttle House test track. Our very own corner of the earth where we can drag race and set lap times. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is kind of a controversial test. It is because the Mustang GT is technically price-wise the underdog, but it has more power. Yeah, but they both are rear-wheel drive and they both have automatic transmissions and they're both equally tired, so... See what happens. Time for slow motion promotion. Yeah, Thomas, or we could do it normal speed. Yeah, fair. Drag races and track tests like this are made possible by our sponsor, Crown Rust Control. If you don't already know, Crown is a company committed to protecting both new and used vehicles from rust, something they've been doing in North America for over 30 years. You see, James has made a whole host of bad decisions in his life. One of the few smart things he's done was to get his WRX Crown. You can find out how to get your car protected through a link in the description, and if you're considering it, things get busy in the winter, so book yourself in soon. Now, to battle. The Mustang GT. Like the Supra, it's a legend by name, and it's under immense pressure to maintain that status with each iteration. Consistently a performance bargain, it's one of the cheapest ways to get into a V8. And even with the performance pack and some Ford factory suspension upgrades, this one is still over $10,000 cheaper than the opposing Supra. And unlike the Performance Pack 2 GT that we featured recently on the channel, this has a 10-speed automatic to match the Supra's 8-speed, a transmission that should manage to put down the 420 pound feet of torque to the rear wheels admirably. Pressure's on. Pressure is on indeed. Because not only is this Supra supposed to be the return of an icon, it also costs a lot more than that Mustang. So we're excited to see what it's capable of. There's a lot of controversy surrounding this car, and how much of it is a BMW, and how much of it is a Toyota, and we will address that in a minute. But all you need to know now is that Toyota says it makes 335 horsepower and 365 pound-feet of torque from a turbocharged inline six, and that this, like the Mustang, is rear-wheel drive and has an automatic transmission. And currently, it's lining up for a drag race. If you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing around. So subscribe and hit the bell. Okay, in the Mustang GT, on the drag strip, 10-speed auto, traction control off, I'm in drag strip mode. This is gonna be aggressive. I gotta take on the Toyota Supra. I don't actually know what's gonna happen here. This is a quick car. It's been dynoed at more than what Toyota says, over 400 pound-feet of torque. And it's light. Ish. I have more power than him. I, we're both rear wheel drive. Our dynos have shown that that's underrated, so I have more power on paper, but who knows what happens when you go up against it on street conditions. I'm excited to see what happens. All right, I'm gonna win this. I'm gonna win this for Germany. Uh, Japan. <laughs> That's close. And I'm pulling on him because I've got more horsepower. No, the Mustang's got the legs. Ah. That's across the line. <laughs> oh, hey. Ah. How are you feeling? You know, I you know what's upsetting for me? What, what's upsetting? I wanted you to win. Did you? That way I could stare at the backside of that car. It's good looking, rather right? Rather than see the front in my wing mirror. <laughs> As it is, I'm happy to have won. Looks like muscle beats import every time. <laughs> All right, should we, should we track this out? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Mustang GT Performance Pack 1. 460 horsepower through that Coyote engine, which just sounds glorious. I've got more power than that Supra, and I've even got back seats. So it's more practical and no less sports car. 
All right, the Toyota Supra. I've been waiting to track this thing. <laughs> this thing hustles in a straight line. It really does. And it does pops and bangs in the downshifts. I love the sound of that engine. And unlike the Supra, this is naturally aspirated. That is, I haven't got to wait for turbos to spool. It's natural. It's organic. Turbochargers are not a thing that you think about. Transmission is good. I like it very much. Downshifts are very fast. But you can't get it in a manual. And that Mustang that James was in in front of me, you can get it in a manual. The sound is very synthetic, but it is definitely inline six. BMW inline six. If you want to drive this actual Supra, you can. Our club cars is the one that hooked us up with this for this test. You can actually choose from a whole fleet of cars, this being one of them. You can take this actual Supra and for a rip on the road. Now, when we drove the PP2 of this, it had the Cup 2s on it. And this has the PS4Ss, and they still feel great. They're obviously not as sticky, but as good as these PS4Ss are, that doesn't mean you can't have some sliding fun with them. But the steering is not that intuitive. It doesn't compare to the Camaros we've driven. But I wonder how it compares to that Supra Thomas is in. So we've all heard the stories that the Toyota Supra is just a rebadged BMW Z4. How true is that? Well, I did some reading and it looks like the suspension components are a mishmash of Z4, BMW 330 with some Toyota stuff thrown in. But what matters to me is that the dampers have been tuned by Toyota. And that means while I found the Z4 very bouncy, this thing is completely dialed in. The suspension is stiff but compliant. It's well damped. The springs are matched to those dampers perfectly in sport mode. Whatever tuning they did, they did it correctly. With all the systems turned off, the front end is absolutely perfect. It's razor sharp. Oversteer on entry is so controllable and so predictable. And then the oversteer on exit is even more predictable and controllable because I have a variable locking diff which can ramp itself up to 100% full lock, which means that if you want to, you can just light up the rear tires and do a very smooth and controlled power slide. <laughs> I've driven the Z4 and I know these share components. But this car is dialed into the pavement in a way that that one isn't. I don't know if that's a job of BMW or the job of Toyota, but I can tell you that doesn't matter because if you have a Supra and you have a track, you will have fun and drive very fast. So this has the factory applied Ford performance suspension and it's pretty aggressive. It's cheaper than the Magna Ride, but it still upgrades it so that when you take it to the track, it feels nice and flat in the corners. What's nice about this car compared to the Supra is that the components in it actually match the badge that's on the front. One thing that blows me away about Mustangs every time is that the front end grip is so good. Do I wish that these had the Recaro seats? Yes, but these are all optional extras. And if you don't get them, you get to keep the price down. This is a performance bargain compared to the Supra. I know we joke and we make fun of this thing for being mostly a BMW. I'm as guilty of that as everybody else is, but honestly, at some point, you stop caring. Whatever badge the car has on the front of it, it's the engineers that came together, whether they were Japanese or German, that created a car in my hands right now that is fun to drive and genuinely fast on a track. I completely adore the way this car drives. It's superior on the drag strip, we know that. I'm, I'm kind of rooting for this. I like the Supra, but I want this to take it in the hot laps. Let's see what Thomas does with it. Okay, time for hot laps, and Thomas is going to start with the Supra. We're going to have one warm-up lap, three hot laps, and one cool-down lap, because that's time attack style, and that's all the time he's going to have. Okay, you'll be watching the fastest lap of each car, and I started with the Supra because I was eager to see what it could do. I found the Supra very easy to drive consistently. In fact, of my three hot laps, there were only two-tenths of a second difference among them. Since it liked to rotate, I found myself being very active on the steering wheel. It was great fun. Also, I usually keep a window open so I don't die of the heat, but the buffeting at high speeds in the Supra was so bad that I thought it was going to give me a concussion. Let's watch the lap.
Okay, so now time for the Mustang. These cars always impress me, and this one was no different. However, I had to drive it a bit differently than the Supra because it did like to understeer a bit more on corner entry. And the 10 speed, while very fast, is easy to get lost in as the ratios are very close and you end up in the wrong gear for the corner when you downshift. Also, before you comment, I did run a hot lap with the windows up. I nearly died of the heat and the lap you're watching was still the fastest, so enjoy. Okay, hot laps, wait, can we just talk about this? That's pretty controversial. In fact, that's bad manners to drive that super at Walbury. You can buy this right now in the throttle host store. Yeah, all right. Okay, hot laps, do you wanna know? Yeah, I do wanna know. Okay, here we go. Super is new kid on the block. Super is new kid on the block. Do you want the super first or the Mustang Okay, so the Mustang we did, we've done the Mustang GT with the PP2 on the Cup 2. With the Cup 2 tires. that was really fast. That was really fast. What was that, it was like 112, 113? Yeah, yeah. Okay, you ready? Yeah. The Mustang did. 115.18. Okay, that's not bad. It's not bad. That's like that's, Civic Type R. That makes about sense for that car on these tires. Yeah. It does. Slightly slower than an M2 comp on the same tires. Yes. Is what that is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Supra. Yeah. 115.06. Super wins? Super wins. Super wins. But I was a little bit disappointed with the performance of this, honestly. It's not quite as fast as I thought it should be. No. Well, uh, it makes sense. It's a second slower than an M2 comp. Yeah. And it has the engine from the M240. Yes, but it got beat by a Honda Civic Type R. Which... That... Uh, eh. So the Mustang takes the drag strip as, yes. the, as the muscle pony car, whatever. Yep. yep. And the Supra takes the track. That seems fair. Seems fair. I don't think there's going to be people rioting just yet. Thanks for watching.